Good morning and welcome back to Miniature Monday on Gaming with ADHD. Today we're going to be taking a look at some more Battletech miniatures, in this case the Clan Heavy Striker Star from Catalyst Game Labs for use with the Battletech tabletop game. Now if you watched my last video, you will know that I am a big fan of the technical readout series of source books. They contain hundreds of pages of rules for the big stompy robots that the game is known for. Uh, the books were presented as an in-universe guide to military hardware. Typically, these books were written from the perspective of Comstar in the early manuals, but they did phase in some different factions that would be doing, uh, doing reports for their different intelligence organizations as the storyline advanced. Now, on the pages of these books, you would find an artist rendition of the mech uh, using a sort of technical line art, uh, in the earlier days to the more detailed art that we see today. Because the game does not technically require any figures to play, the art did help to solidify the image of the metal behemoth you are about to pilot into battle. Now, this is not to say that miniatures haven't always been a part of the game. In fact, from the earliest edition, Battle Droids, the game included miniatures to play the game with. And in later editions, miniatures were made available to replace the cardboard standees that came with the game. Now, most often these miniatures were made of metal and required assembly. But in 2019, Catalyst Game Labs ran the Clan Invasion Kickstarter to help expand their line of pre-assembled plastic miniatures. And one of those sets is the Clan Heavy Striker Star, as you can see here. Uh, it does contain five mechs. But we're going to open up and look at it a little bit closer. Now you're probably asking yourself, why is this guy doing an unboxing for miniatures that come in a window box and are pre-assembled? And that's a fair question. But as I said in my previous video, to me there's always been an interesting crossover between the art presented in the technical readouts and other source books and the miniatures that we actually received. So with that said, I got some good feedback on that last video, and I'm going to continue by providing a 360 view of the miniature in question. Obviously, in the window box, you only get the front-facing view, uh, so this way you can look at it from all sides. And we'll also be taking a look at the different art that was used to represent the mechs from their early introductions towards the art that gave us the figures that we have today. Now, before we get started, do make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I'll be releasing more of these as I acquire the sets. I've already got some in stock, but I don't want to overwhelm you guys. So they will be coming out about once a week. And, uh, you know, if you like what you see here, I would absolutely appreciate it if you did like the video. And don't forget to comment down below. What are your favorite mechs? You know, what did you like out of this set? Uh, how well do you think the art actually represents what we received? So... With that being said, let's take a quick look at the, the, the contents of the box as we open it up, and then we'll switch over to looking at the art and the mechs as I go along. So, as you can see, you do get a full star of mechs, so five mechs. And one thing I do like about the way they've organized these is they are a mix of all sorts of different weight classes. Uh, anywhere from, in this case, 40 tons to 80 tons. Uh, we've got the gargoyle at the heaviest at 80 tons, down to the viper or dragonfly at 40 tons. Now, as always, we do get a selection of cards. We get the pilot cards for, uh, for the mechs in question if you're going to play a regular game of Battletech, and I'm not sure why my camera is not focusing this time. There we go. So you're going to get a card that is double-sided and has... Let me, move, let me move the mechs out of the way. There we go. That's better. So it's double-sided. So you get a, a card for a mech... Or you get a card for two different factions. So in this case, we've got Ghost Bear and Jade Falcon... Uh, you get a pilot name, and then you also get their pilot and their or their gunnery and their pilot skill. So, uh, you know, basically, give you an idea of 
you know, how good the pilot is. Man, I do not know why this camera just doesn't want to focus. But, so yeah, we get a card for each of the mechs in question. And then we also get the Alpha Strike cards. So if you don't like the granular nature of regular Battletech, you can play Alpha Strike with its streamlined rules, which, from what I've been seeing from Catalyst Game Labs, does support absolutely massive games of Battletech. So, those are the cards you're going to get. They are completely optional. You don't require these to play. Um, but it is fun that they've been adding them, and I like that they've been doing that. So, let's now switch over to our close-up view. So, the first one in question is the Gargoyle or Manowar. This is one of the Assault class mechs for the clans and this was the first image that we saw of these mechs now this was in the original technical readout 3050 all of the clan mechs were presented in this sort of blueprint nose on look all of the mechs that we're going to look at today did come out of 3050 so we are going to start with this look but even then they quickly moved to this more we have updated art. This was from the 3050 upgrade. And uh, as you can see, it actually gives you more depth, actually lets you see uh, like the, the gargoyle and the gladiator both had these kind of like giant knee pads that you can sort of see in the original art. Um, but you know, again, you don't get a whole lot of depth. And so this does give you that depth. It, you know, you can see clearly, okay, we've got a, you know, the small laser here, the short range missiles, and the auto cannons. Now, this is the current art. This was featured in Recog the, the Ill Clan Recognition Guide number 11. So this is very, very recent. And this is the art that was actually used to make the miniature that you see on the 360 view. Uh, I actually I, I actually really like this upgrade. The, the original art, uh, I, it reminds me sort of of kind of like a Robbie the Robot kind of situation, if you remember that. Uh, you know, very, you know, very night we'll call it 1960s even though i realize you know the art came out in the 90s but just has that sort of old school robot look to it whereas the new one does sort of have that battle tech you know assault class you know atlas style death's head look to it so i really like where where they went with this art and uh looking forward to painting this one so we'll let him come back around and then we will move on to our next mech, which is going to be the Hellbringer or Loki. Now this is basically the clan version of a Warhammer. So it's got the paired weapons in each arm that are identical. We've got an SRM pack on the shoulder. Uh, in the original art that you can see here from 3050, it looks like there is a sort of uh, missile system on its hips. Um, even though uh, technically, uh, you know, it only had the one missile system. So you could either consider it the anti-personnel pods or something along those lines. Uh, it uh, quickly moved in to this piece of art, which we got in the Jade Falcon source book. Uh, and so Jade Falcon was one of the... Jade Falcons and Wolves were the two big clans that they introduced when the, when the clan invasion took off. So they each actually got their own source book early on, and so we got some additional art for the mechs here. 
Now, when they did the 3050 upgrade, so uh, basically when they had to redo some of the art, uh, remove some mechs due to licensing issues, things like that, that's when we got this version of the mech. So still uh, very close to that original art, uh, especially where you've got some of the more, we'll call it delicate arms here along the side. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's still very, very good piece of art. Uh, definitely, I think, represents uh, the mech very well. And then we get over to the current one, which was used for the miniature that we're looking at. Uh, it's a it's a great looking mech. Uh, I think the Warhammer is probably uh, as as iconic, if not a little bit more so than the Marauder, in my opinion. And this, I think, is a nice, we'll call it upgrade or modernization of that uh, that aesthetic because. The, the Warhammer being a bit older, having come out originally from Macross in the 80s. And so you get, you know, a decade's worth of art improvement, things like that. And I think they did a great job with this figure. All right. Moving on to our next is one of the others that just screams classic in my mind. Uh... While the the Timberwolf or Mad Cat is the most iconic, to me, the Vulture or Mad Dog, uh, as it's known by the clans, is probably just as just as close. Um, I like the uh, the LRM racks on the shoulders. Uh, this one, I think, is probably one of the better pieces of art that we got in the line art drawings. Um, I remember getting the heavy mechs uh, in metal back when I was a kid, so 30-ish years ago. And this one, I think, was probably one of the closer pieces of art uh, that I could at least get some kind of perspective. Uh, this is our 3050 upgrade art. And, uh, again, it, because it runs on the same legs as a, as a Mad Cat or a Timberwolf, I think it just, it, it still captures a lot of that feel. Uh, I really, I really did like this mech, especially with the, the, the LRMs and, you know, just the, the double laser arms. And then we've got this more current art from Il Clan Recognition Guide Volume 10. And again, the the more modern art, a bit more action oriented, a lot more detail, uh, actually some background detail that you can see. So uh, overall, great piece of art, absolutely love it. And I do love what they did with the mech. Uh, they are, they're, they're modernizing the art but still respecting the source material that it came from. And I absolutely love it when companies do that. I don't mind getting some modernizations, but at least be faithful to the art that came before. All right. Now, next one we're going to look at is the Ice Ferret or Fenris one of the medium mechs coming in at about 45 tons, I believe. Where are my notes? Uh, yes, Ice Ferret at 45 tons. Uh, so we've got medium mech uh, running an ERPPC small laser and a an SRM2 streak missile pack. So again, we've got our you know, blueprint line art which doesn't give us a whole lot of detail, but I think they, yeah, you know, so we've got our 3050 upgrade here where you can see it a bit better. Uh, you know, obviously it's a little bit different as far as the weapon systems it's carrying. Um, but then we've got our more modern art here from Il Clan Volume 4. Uh, I definitely, I actually really prefer this one 
over the original art. The original art, I didn't get a lot of uh, detail. I didn't understand a lot what they were doing with it. But I think they improved it and they made it a better looking mech uh, with this current piece of art. Now I realize that you know art standards do change over 30 years, but I think they've done a, a great job with this one. And I think the figure itself just you know wonderfully captures all of the detail uh, that they put into this new piece of art. So I really like that one. All right, now the last one in this set is the Viper or Dragonfly. Now this is the smallest of the medium class mechs. And this is our original piece of art from 3050. Now it still has the kind of the, the weird looking hands and arms that were very common on the the 3050 light mechs for the clans uh, but I think even between the the new art and the old art I think they actually did really well at capturing capturing the mech and making it look you know like you're expecting uh, our our ill clan version is right here and i think you know number one i like how they they change the hands uh if you look back to the previous piece of art the hands were at different levels they were different sizes and just kind of throws off the mech i'll be honest i am one that i really gravitate towards symmetry so you know, doing things like this where it's very, you know, offsetting and looks very different kind of throws throws off my brain. Um, so I like that they made the arms a little bit more symmetrical, uh, but still, you know, put the SRM rack on on the left arm and the double the double lasers on the right. And I think they I think they made a better mech, uh, especially with the uh, the I'm guessing the machine guns in the nose, uh, in in the at the very front of the mech, uh, I think they made I think they made that look a little bit better as well. So that is all five mechs from the Clan Heavy Striker Star, uh, and yep, yeah, Heavy Striker Star. I moved my notes off, so, <laughs> uh, but. Uh, what did you think? You know, are you picking this set up? Is this one that you're gonna skip? Which is your favorite out of this? You know, overall, I think that uh, Catalyst is doing a great job with these new figures, and I am really excited to see what they do moving forward. Uh, they they put out a lot of sets with the Ill Clan, and I'm excited to see what they do moving forward. So. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, if you like what I'm doing, please do subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting out a lot more and yeah, looking into, into some different, different content as I move along. But let me know what you'd like to see. And you know, if I can move it up in the schedule, I'll be more than happy to try. So thanks for watching and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.